from the coaches, and then we'll open it up for questions. You want to go, Kenny? You can go. All right. I've done a few more of these than you have. I think so. Uh, well, it, it, we, we'd like to thank uh, everybody with the Music City Bowl and the city of Nashville and, uh, and the, all the people that helped make this thing go for the, the players. It's, uh, it's really a wonderful place, and you couldn't ask for a better venue to keep a team. So, uh, and we've had uh, good practices, good focus practices back home. Uh, and the energy and the leadership uh, of the seniors has really affected this bowl preparation in a, in a big way. And that's not coach speak. They, uh, they truly have uh, energized these guys with the, with the proper leadership. So uh, as far as guys that uh, everybody's healthy with the exception of Nick Coe, so uh, that's, that's a plus particularly after going through the season with seem like Nick here and a Nick there and not Nick Coe, but a Nick of the body. And, and so uh, we're, we're pretty fortunate in that we're healthy. Uh, uh, I just got here obviously. So I'm just kind of using this, this bowl prep just to kind of observe and kind of learn about our football team just from an outsider's perspective, you know, but uh, what I've seen so far is very impressive in terms of how our guys have prepared for the bowl game. You know, similar to what Coach Steele says, I think our guys have had a good mindset in terms of coming here and, and trying to get the job done. And uh, just honored to be here. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm just here kind of observing uh, up to this point. We'll now open it up for questions. So if you'll raise your hand, we'll get you the mic. Kenny, I was talking to uh, Coach Ragel about your time there. What did you learn from him? And in that time, you're an offensive coordinator on the high school level. And how did your path from there lead you to Arizona State? Because I know he's kind of got other connections and went elsewhere. But how did your paths cross? And then when did they diverge, so to speak? Well, he was my high school coach. And uh, the biggest thing I learned from him is uh, this deals about people. And it will always be about people. It's about the players, it's about the people, uh, and that is the profession. It's a profession built around people. And uh, that was the biggest thing I learned from him, and I've kind of taken that with me. And, and that's how I got to Arizona State, was I built a relationship with, with Coach Norbell by coming up and just learning. And, uh, and that's kind of how, how I uh, approach every day, is what person can I impact? And uh, if you can impact one person every day, uh, eventually when your time's done on earth, you're gonna be a happy man and uh, people are going to remember you for the positives. So that's kind of how my path has gotten to where it is, just about people. Kevin, when you watch Rondell Moore on film over the last month, what goes through your mind? Football player. Makes plays. Makes plays. Uh, you know, obviously, when you're in the SEC, you face talented players week in and week out. Uh, and they, they give you... You, you take notice of, of you know, how, how are we going to match up here, how are we going to match up there. And, and the first thing that you see when you, when you turn it on is he, he presents issues in terms of making sure you're in the right place the right way. Just to follow up on that question, how about just Purdue's offense as a whole, what stands out to you in general? Pardon me? Uh, Purdue's offense as a whole in general, when you look at it, what, what stands out in general about the, well, uh, what they I, do? I think probably the biggest thing is we often say, you hear this, you've been in enough press conferences, well, they're well coached. Uh, and uh, that's a compliment to any football team, and coaches use that statement a lot. I think probably the thing that once you dig into it and really break down the, the tape, uh, yes, they are well coached, but the, the play caller uh, is very, very, very difficult to call against. Uh, he. He is, uh, you know, there's the guys that cover us have heard this. When you, when you coach against somebody and they make adjustments at halftime, that's an issue. Uh, every now and then you get lucky and you coach against somebody and they make adjustments on Sunday when they watch the film. And uh, we should have done this and we should have done that. Uh, but the guy that we're going against uh, tomorrow, uh, he's going to get you the next play. If you're cheating something uh, to take away something, he is very, very good at, at attacking it in that series or soon thereafter. So you've got you've to have more pitches in your, in, your, uh, in your game plan in terms of 
being able to adjust and alter things because he will find where you're trying to take things away and then know what's exposed because of that and attack it immediately. So you can't sit there and throw a fastball every pitch. You can't throw a curveball. You better have some knuckleballs and sliders too because he's, he's going to attack you. Just, just to follow up on that, is that is your observation just on watching what Purdue has done this year, or do you have a history against going against a uh, Brahm offense? Well, I, you know, you watch so much tape and, and coaching uh, that you see offenses go against other defenses when you're studying defenses in the offseason, so that's some of it. Um, there's been one time where uh, Jeff was on the other sideline, and uh, I think it was LSU in Western Kentucky. So we have that, but uh, we've even gone back and watched every one of his bowl games uh, where he called plays and just to see the difference between the season and the, and the bowl game. Um, it, it's a lot of things. Uh, when you sit there and think that we actually went back and watched Western Kentucky tape, we've watched, watched a lot of tape on it. Kevin, is, it, is this the healthiest your defensive line's been in a while? And how helpful, obviously, is that going into a game when they have some renewed energy and after being, you know, beat up and beat up facing SEC offensive lines? Right. It is the healthiest we've been. Uh, you know, all the guys are healthy, and, and you can tell it uh, in practice. Obviously, Nick being missing, but uh, Big Cat and, and, uh, and TD have, have done very well in practice sessions, but it is the, the healthiest we've been. Kenny, what are your first impressions of the quarterbacks that are behind Jarrett and the guys that you're going to be working with, you know, next season? I think they're talented. I mean, obviously, game reps is something that, that they've lacked, but they're guys that can throw the ball. They have quick releases. They're both extremely athletic. Uh, so I, I've been impressed so far, but obviously, you know, from an, from an outsider's perspective, it's hard to really, you know, from a schematic and if they execute the offense, it's hard to – to see how much, how well they have grasped it, grasped it, or how well they execute it when I haven't been here all year to, to see it installed and to see exactly how it should look. Those are the things I'm learning myself uh, in terms of the coaching progressions and teaching progressions that, uh, that I'm trying to pick up along those lines. But from a talent perspective, I think they're, they're uh, very talented. Kevin, uh, did you have any time to look at some of the young guys in bowl practices that didn't play much this year? We, we did. Uh, obviously, in the early part of bowl practice, we ended each practice session with a, with a young guy's scrimmage, and, and we did some of that, so we did. But now we're a little bit different because we played most of our freshmen and played them in significant roles. Uh, uh, we had a large number that played. Uh, and so that was limited a little bit, but we had some of the others that uh, had not played that we got good reps with. And, and for Kenny, talk, talk about how much of a relationship you had with Coach Malzahn before he offered the job and w maybe when you first remember meeting him? I mean, the first time I met Coach Miles on was when he came up, him and, uh, and Coach Lindsey came up to, to Memphis where I was at and uh, just watching our film and cut-ups and came out to watch a spring ball practice was the first time I ever met him. And, and then the second time I ever met him, I was interviewing for this job. And uh, those were really the first and second times I ever met him. Uh, obviously, our coaching trees uh, are, are the same tree. And I heard about him all the time in our room. You know, this is what coach would do. This is what coach would do, you know. And uh, so I, I've heard about him uh, more than I've actually met him uh, in a positive light. And uh, I'm excited to get to work alongside him. And uh, is it exciting for you? You're not, uh, you're probably one of the youngest offensive coordinators in FBS program. Talk about that. I mean, it really has no bearing on me. I mean, I've been young my entire life coaching. I started coaching at 17. I got married last year. The youngest person at my wedding, other than my best friend that I invited, was 37 years old. So I mean, my age is I'm kind of the all my all my friends are one of my best friends is 64. I mean that's just kind of how I am. My dad's 70. You know my brothers are 42 and 39. I mean I just grew up in an environment where you know I'm always going to be older than you know the year I was born. Kenny, how much uh, help is it coming in now? Uh, to take a look at the offense before spring practices here and getting to know the guys a little bit under these conditions? Um, I think it goes back to the first comment. And I think the first thing I need to evaluate is the people and the players. You know, I'm just trying to build relationships right now. I mean, you can't coach players uh, that you don't have relationships with. 
Uh, that's the first and the most important thing in coaching is the relationships that you build. So I think right now, I mean, I joke around it with the guys is I'm trying to learn names and I'm trying to build relationships. And I think that's been the most valuable thing for me in bowl prep is learning names and building relationships and kind of figuring out what things make certain players tick, what things certain players respond to. Because as a coach, that's what matters. Kenny, obviously you spent these first couple of weeks getting acclimated and just learning names and all that, but what, what has this transition been like you for these first you know, 16, 17 days or whatever? I mean, it, it's exciting. I mean, but uh, to me, I'm not a guy who gets really too high or too low. I mean, I'm kind of the same person every day. So I would say it's just, you know, it's exciting to get here and, and uh, get, get around this program, which is one of the top programs in the country, and, uh, and get around our players. But uh, I'm just, but from a, you know, too high or too low, surreal, not surreal, it's just, you know, I'm just excited. I'm excited to get better every day. I'm excited to, you know, do what I can to uh, make the Auburn football program better. Kevin, you guys have built a lot of depth <clears throat> in the secondary this year, playing all those young guys. How valuable is that going in against a team like Purdue, especially in a bowl situation where they may throw everything in the kitchen sink at you on, on, on tomorrow? Uh, well, they, they, they've got everything in the kitchen sink, uh, so we may see it. Uh, obviously, you know, it, it's, football is a matchup game. And uh, when, you, when you're going against four wide receivers and five wide receivers at some times, you, you probably don't want to have a linebacker covering that guy. Uh, and so, uh, you know, when you've got numbers in the secondary that have played and a pretty good set of numbers, uh, it allows us to at least have an opportunity to try to match up. And this is our last question. Uh, Kenny, I was just wondering, as a guy who played linebacker and spent his life on defense, how did you become interested in coaching offense and now where you're known as a a quarterback's guy? Uh, I think it just started when you, I think the key to, to football is understanding defense, whether you coach offense or you coach defense. And I think, you know, offense stems from understanding what the defense is trying to take away, understanding why they're trying to take it away and understanding the weakness of the defense. So I think in high school, I was around some really good defensive coordinators, uh, some really good defensive coaches. And that kind of stemmed me to, to, to want to try to take advantage of, uh, of defense. And uh, that's kind of how I, I made that transition. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.